good morning, good afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're connecting from. We would like to welcome you to this virtual event, and we thank you for your participation. Hello, everyone. My name is Christian Zacchino. I am the Communications, IT, and Project Manager at Island Innovation, a company that builds digital bridges between the world's islands through our different services. We are proud to be organizing this event for the Montserrat Remote Work STEM as a part of our communication and marketing strategy services in sustainable development, tourism, and remote work. We are very honored to be working with the Montserrat Tourism Division to highlight the island's remote work program. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We would like to know more about you. So we are going to be starting a poll right now. It should pop up on your screen. And we ask you three short questions. The first one is what region are you connecting from? The second one is what sector do you belong to? And the third one is what industry do you work for? So please go ahead and answer the questions in the polls. We will give you a minute or, or so to answer the questions. And we also would like to thank you again for participating on this webinar. I can see people are starting to answer the polls. So please go ahead and also introduce yourself in the chat. We also want to remind you that any questions that you may have, please add them in the Q&A box and we can address them in the Q&A section that's later on this virtual event. Okay, so I see that the majority of people are from the Caribbean and North America, so welcome, uh, very close to us. And the third uh, region is Europe. We also have people from Africa and the Indian Ocean, welcome. And the sector, most of you uh, belong to the private sector. And uh, we have also from the NGO and academia and you work on environmental services, events management, management consulting, tourism, and other industries. So thank you for uh, answering these questions in the poll. Now we have a second question that is about your interest in remote work. So we're going to launch that poll shortly. want to know what's your interest in remote work. So you can answer in the chat, are you interested in working remotely from any particular place? Like for example, here on the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean. So please answer in the chat, what is your interest on remote work? Are you interested? Does it, uh, is it something that you want to do in the future or in the near future? Please answer in the chat. We want to know your opinion. Did you know that Montserrat has been referred to as the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean? And that is thanks to the Irish ancestry of its population and its resemblance to coastal Ireland. Montserrat is a very beautiful and peaceful island to live and work in, and you will find out why at this virtual event. I can see in participation people here in the chat that they are very interested in remote work. So, this is great. So this event is definitely for you. And uh, why choose Montserrat? We have all of what's good on Montserrat here in this event. And we will tell you everything that you need to know before you visit or travel here on Montserrat. 
Now, without further ado, I leave the floor to our first panelist, the Honorable Premier Joseph Easton Taylor Farrell, for his opening remarks. Honorable Premier, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. It is my distinct pleasure as Premier of Montserrat and Minister of Tourism to extend to you a warm greetings from our Emerald Isle of the Caribbean. Welcome to this important webinar, which beckons you to discover yourself living and working remotely in Montserrat. As you ponder your next move, and no doubt your destination choice from which to work remotely, we have documented pertinent information that will help to guide you through the process. <clears throat> Remote working in Montserrat at this time is not new, as this, is, that this very island was once the playground for many stars who recorded the albums here at the world-renowned Air Studio that was built by the late Sir George Martin back in the early 1980s. There was no pandemic then to hasten their visits, but just knowing enough about the island and what it has to offer suffice. Montserrat provided the perfect blend of Caribbean life, infused with enough solitude for stars like Paul McCartney, Steve Wonder, Stevie Wonder, Sting, Dare Straits, Luther Vandross, and others who made the island their home for many months in a year to record some of their best and most successful ad ad albums. Today, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way in which people work and play, many of whom are looking towards destinations that can provide the right balance to call their home. All of the attributes which Monstrat has sought after destination to aspire creatively and productively in the past still remains, including majestic mountains, beautiful vistas, soft adventure activities, safety, and generally warm islands. This is now with the addition of high-speed internet to make remote working that much easier. Monstrat fared well from the pandemic. Since its start, the island recorded a total of 176 confirmed cases, and sadly, two deaths. There is currently one active case with a 47% of the eligible population vaccinated. Approximately 200 of our tourism stakeholders underwent multidisciplinary training to ensure that you, the visitors, and remote workers to Monstrat can work in a safe and healthy environment. Whilst working in Monstrat, you will also be exposed to a rich cultural tradition, which comes to life during our annual festivals. In December last year, we successfully hosted a scaled down version of our carnival celebrations. And just last month, we also hosted a scaled back version of our annual St. Patrick's Festival. On March 31st, 2022, we opened our borders fully and to vaccinated persons, both vaccinated and unvaccinated persons, you can now visit the island freely, provided they submit a negative PCR or RNA or rapid antigen test. And then they can test negative on arrival. And if that's the case, then you're free to roam the island at your leisure. However, non-vaccinated persons are also welcome, but we require to also submit a negative PCR test and a quarantine period for 10 days. It is quite easy to fall in love with Montserrat, as it can genuinely allow you to discover and rediscover yourself while working here. The opportunity exists for you to be at home and a one with nature, where a trail, a beach might be yours alone for one day. That said, don't take my word for it. Come and experience for yourself. We look forward to welcoming you to our shores. Your home, are we from home? 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Premier Easton, for your remarks. And now we will hear from Rosetta West, who is the Director of Tourism of Montserrat. Rosetta, the floor is yours. Hello, good morning, everyone, and welcome. As we share with you how you can actually discover yourself while working remotely on Montserrat. Just a bit about us. So Montserrat is known as the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean, and that is because we are a very green, picturesque destination in the Caribbean. We are also a British overseas territory. We are 35.9 square miles and still growing. And we say still growing because when the volcanic activity started in 1995, we had pyroclastic flows, which extended our shoreline. And as a result, persons are able to build businesses on these shorelines, um, restaurants, bars, and of course, a small golf course. So yes, we are still growing. Our population is just about 5,000 people, and we are located in the Eastern Caribbean, Northwest of Guadeloupe and Southwest of Antigua. And so it has a stable internet connection. We recently had a fiber. So we have very stable internet connection, high speed. No months, no months right income tax payments for persons who want to work remotely here. Our size, which is, as I say, 39 square miles, is very intimate and friendly people. So we have a great community spirit amongst us. No commute, no traffic lights or queues. Very low crime rate. As a matter of fact, we are considered to be one of the, having low, one of the lowest crime rate in the region and perhaps in the world. Child safe. Educational facilities may, well, will include, sorry, um, nursery schools, primary schools. We also have a secondary school and a community college. Lush mountains and diverse nature trails. We have nine trails which we promote. And we have recently done some upgrades to the trails. So we have um, handrails that were included, added, signages to be added, put works were added. So we you know, made it safe for everyone who would like to visit the trails. Spectacular landscapes and amazing views from almost anywhere. Beautiful beaches and amazing scuba diving. So yes, we have one active case, um, COVID-19 case at the moment. And we had over period, which the Premier would have mentioned, 176 active cases, one active case at the moment, and 47% of our population, of the eligible population, has been vaccinated. So, as mentioned before, our borders are open. To fully vaccinated travelers, no quarantine is required. Um, PCR, RNA, or rapid antigen tests must be taken three days prior to arrival. Rapid antigen tests taken upon arrival will cost just US $56. 10 days quarantine if you are unvaccinated. And masks, we advise that masks must be worn in public spaces. And that is whether you go to the bank, Etc. in the business place. So getting to Montserrat is actually quite easy. So if you're traveling from North America, um, be it Atlanta, Charlotte, Newark, New York, Miami, even Canada, you get over to Antigua, which is our hub, and that Hub, you take 15 minutes fine time from Antigua to Montserrat. So you can get here all in a day's work. And if you're coming from Europe, you can take a flight into London Gatwick or London Heathrow and take a flight from London Gatwick over to Antigua. Again, 15 minutes flying time from Antigua to Montserrat. Pretty easy to get to Montserrat.
So we have two airlines that service the island. We have Montserrat Airways and SVG Airlines, and both are small commuter planes, um, each seven seats. Um, those flights generally would have other flights that would service us in high season. So for example, you have a twin auto service fly, um, which is twin auto service, a nine seater flight, Winnie, that would add to the fleet during high season. So sometimes during March and in December, we'll have that flight over to Montserrat as well. And as I said, it's only 15 minutes flying time from Antigua to Montserrat. And if you're coming on um, that twin auto flight, uh, sometimes it comes from St. Martin and takes about 30, 35 minutes directly from St. Martin to Montserrat. Pretty easy to get to our shores. So as I mentioned, we have a stable internet service. Um, fiber was recently added to homes and businesses. And so persons are able to use high speed internet from almost anywhere on the island. Um, and we have up to 20 megabits per second. And that range, you know, it tends to go up and down, but it sort of averages around 20, 20 megabits per second in terms of the speed. So mentioned before, these are some of the trails that we promote. Um, as I said, we promote nine. And Montserrat is a destination that promotes soft adventure tourism. So we have hiking, biking, diving, volcano viewing, turtle watching, walking, all of those outdoors activities uh, are the things that we promote on our unique island of Montserrat. In addition to the trails and other activities, we also have volcano viewing. So Montserrat um, had an eruption of a volca volcano, Sufre Hills volcano in 1995, and that extended for, for a period. And so we had um, what our main area, our main city or town center, Plymouth, was buried. And as a matter of fact, we're now showcasing that as one of our attractions, and it is considered our star attraction and is coined our buried Pompeii. So this buried city, persons who have undergone training, so tour operators, tour guides who have done training, taxi drivers, they are the ones who would operate tours into the buried city. And persons are only allowed to go to the buried city with a certified driver. In addition to that, we have our Montserrat Volcano Observatory, which monitors the volcano on a 24 hour basis, seven days a week, and that we are very happy to have because it helps to keep us you know, safe. It keeps us um, updated with information. So we are happy to have the Volcano Observatory. In addition to the MVO um, and the Buried City, you have other areas that you can view the volcano because we are a mountainous island. Almost anywhere that you go, you can have views of the volcano, of course, provided it is not shrouded in cloud cover. So as I mentioned, we have a lot of areas for persons to enjoy. You have spaces for young adults, children um, to roam freely in our climate. The climate is perfect. And so they're able to roam freely. And as a matter of fact, the Montserrat National Trust will be constructing an eco, eco play park sometime next year. And this is gonna be a children's garden with interactive play, play park. So that is soon to come. So that will add to the activities that children can get or participate in. In addition, we, the Montserrat Tourism Division will be building a volcano interpretation center. And that center will showcase social and scientific elements and exhibits, interactive exhibits that persons can enjoy. Children, of course, will be able to, to participate in that. <laughs> So as we mentioned before, Montserrat is a very safe destination. Did you know that you can actually leave your vehicle open literally all night, he's in your car, and no one will actually remove that car from where it is. So we are that safe. And in addition to that safe, being that safe, we did 
um, our training last year and we try to you know, help the, the locals help the sector become certified. So persons would have done certification training and that will help them to welcome you to Montserrat. So those um, persons who were trained were inspected and were provided with the service ready um, stamp, beckoning them, well, telling you that yes, Montserrat is open for business and that they can take care of you. So in addition to our trails, et cetera, and as I say, Plymouth, you can actually view Plymouth from a boat. So you can take a, a tour, a water taxi down the coast and view Plymouth, the very city and other areas from a boat. And we have, we have a shot here of the only white sand beach, believe it or not, the only white sand beach, which is Rendezvous Beach on Montserrat. So, and we are known for black sand beaches because of our volcanic ori origins. So, um, they, so yes, we have that white sand beach. In addition to that, we have built several toilet facilities um, on the beaches with funding from the European Union. We were able to construct toilet facilities on the main beaches. One beach has a toilet facility for the physically challenged and persons who would have babies be able to change their baby changing facilities also in that um, facility. Scuba diving is another activity that we, we have on the island. Snorkeling, kayaking, Stand up paddle boarding, all of these activities, these water activities are possible on Montserrat. Montserrat has over 30 dive sites and persons can participate and you know just have fun while at the beach. And so we do have onshore activities, the mountains, like the trails, etc., and activities in the ocean, diving, biking, boating, sorry, snorkeling, kayaking, stand up paddle boarding, etc. So in addition to those activities, we also promote our sports. So we have a FIFA football ground that was built and persons do come to Montserrat to play football matches. As a matter of fact, we have a couple of matches coming up in June of this year against some of the other islands. And we also do um, basketball. We have a basketball stadium and cricket is one of our favorite pastimes on the island. So a lot of people tend to participate in cricket. And each year the schools also have activities. So they would have, as a matter of fact, around this time of the year, I think this today and tomorrow and, and the other day, they will have sporting activities. So inter-school sporting activities where you have track and field, um, tug of war, that sort of thing. So it's just a vibrant um, destination when it comes to sporting activities at these times of the year. Food, oh, glorious food. Yes, we do have a lot of different types of cuisine, um, ranging from street food to international cuisine. And as you see, we have all sorts. And our major, our main dish is the goat water, which is an Irish stew. And that is made of goat meat or kid's meat. And we would generally serve that at special occasions, um, at weddings or perhaps during our festival. So it is, and sometimes on, on, on the weekend, you will get that, that um, national dish. And it's a special dish. Everybody cooks it differently, but it's really tasty. So you see some of our traditional foods, salt fish and duck now, which is our traditional food, um, dumpling. Then you have, as I say, goat water. There's also conch water and a lot of other traditional foods. So in addition to all of that, we have four main festivals. We have the Calabash Festival that's coming up in July. And as you see, the lady is smiling there in the, in the foreground with her Calabash bowl. 
And so Calabash Festival is iconic. We use the iconic Calabash fruit and that food that she has in her hand, that bowl, uh, we sometimes serve during festivals, serve dishes, whether it be soups or goat water in that bowl. Some people use that bowl and make um, utensils or, or necklaces, earrings, etc. So that's an iconic um, food. We also have a literary festival, which is in November, and that bring all of the literary minds together in that festival in November. And in Christmas, we have our Christmas carnival. Um, the premier would have mentioned, we just had a scale back one um, this year, last year. However, this year we'll be celebrating 60 years of carnival. So we're getting ready. We have already started to ramp things up and ready for 60 years of carnival in Montserrat. So that's in December. And that generally runs from about the middle of December to the 1st of January. Then our St. Patrick's Festival, that is our main festival. And that festival happens in March. So we are the only island outside of Ireland that has St. Patrick's or um, March 17th as a public holiday. So on that day, we have all of these activities, people dress in green and in our Afro-Irish clothing, because it's a twofold festival with Afro-Irish festival, Africans and the Irish. So we, our festival is a blend between the two. And at that time you have the parades, the street parades, the food, food galore, and purses in their green and white. It's a sight to behold. And of course, at that time and all the other activities during our festival, we have our masquerade. That masquerade is our iconic band, our music, our drumming. And um, it's a pity we can't give you a listen at this, but we will give you a listen hopefully when we showcase some of our videos. And so yes, that's, those are the festivals that we have during the year. So you definitely will have something to participate in when you visit Montserrat. So of course, all of that, you need to rest your head. You need some place to stay. And Montserrat has a range of accommodation that range from um, budget um, to more expensive. And these are quaint um, villas, B and Bs, um, guest houses. We generally mainly have villas on the islands and apartments. So definitely you will not have a problem getting a place to stay on the island. And some of them have beautiful, most of them have beautiful views if not all, and swimming pools. Some of them have pools, etc. So they're fully equipped and definitely the place to be. Um, you can go out on your patio with your, your laptop and do your work remotely. So definitely not a problem um, working remotely on Monstrat. So this is showing you some of the different um, accommodations that we have. And as you see, almost everywhere you look is either a mountain view or sea view or both. So it's just such a picturesque destination. Um, so definitely, I, I'm sure you would not be spoiled for the choice when you come here. So basically, how do you actually apply? So the Escape Work Explore stamp works for an employer that is registered in a foreign country. Um, you have to earn an annual income of 70 US, 70,000 US dollars. And we are looking to reduce this amount, but this will come in, in the coming months. We definitely are looking to reduce that threshold. Um, you must have a health insurance with valid Montserrat and COVID-19 coverage. Application fees, you have single applicant, it's 500 US dollars, and families with up to three dependents, $750. So it's, it's quite easy to, to apply. And the application process only takes seven days.
So with that said, I would like to thank you for spending time with us today. And I hope you'll have questions for us because we're eager okay. to hear what you, your thoughts are and how you, you would like to know more about Montserrat um, and come to Montserrat to work remotely. For persons who do not have, who would require a visit to come to Montserrat, we urge you to go to www.immigration.ms and to determine whether or not you are eligible to come and, and how you can apply for a visa to come to the island. And um, you'll see the different ways you can contact us at the Tourism Division. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Rosetta, for that presentation. That definitely makes us all want to be there right now. Montserrat is such a beautiful place. And now we have some, some videos for you that are about what uh, Rosetta was referring to previously on the uh, session. The first one is our tourism adventure video. So please pay attention. Great, and now we will show you a little bit about our St. Patrick's Festival on the next video. So please pay attention. Amazing, right? And now we have another video for you that is going to show you what you can do here on the island of Montserrat. Montserrat closer than you think. Fantastic, right? It makes you want to go there, right? And now we have another video for you that is a testimonial video from one of the families that worked remotely on Montserrat, the batch course. Hi, I'm Crystal Bycourt. 
and I am on Drush Bike Road, and we are here in uh, Montserrat. <laughs> the beautiful island in the Caribbean, Montserrat. It's, uh, <laughs> it is quite an incredible experience actually to be here. Um, I think, I think us as a family, we have been looking for what the next step is going to be in our life. Mm -hmm. um, and naturally, uh, we just were open to uh, whatever is going to be thrown at us. Uh, by either by the universe or, or just uh, what we're going to be finding in life. We're up for adventure. We are. <laughs> we are. We, um, we can talk about that in a moment, but I think it's important to give a little bit of a background and that uh, we, we have traveled the world. We have had the chance to travel the world and uh, uh, we left our corporate jobs behind. And uh, once we set in 2017, yes. And when we um, when we settled down and we had kids, it was it was beautiful. And we thought we are ready for the next step. And uh, I think one day uh, I was just going through my news feed and uh, just came up on this article about uh, digital nomads. Quite honestly, I did not. Have any idea what a digital nomad was. So I uh, did a little bit of research and uh, that was Montserrat. I knew it was a Caribbean. I heard we, we have had the wonderful opportunity of coming to the Caribbean as well before and we'll talk about that in a moment. But never Montserrat. But never, never Montserrat. Here. Yes. So we haven't been to Montserrat, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that didn't stop us. <laughs> Okay, we seem to have lost Christian, so I'll go ahead and invite David um, to come on and talk about his experience in Montserrat. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes, all we right, can. Wonderful. Okay. Yes, Christian. Can hear you. Thank you. Christian, do you want to say something first before I start? Yes, so now we will hear from you, David. David is are also a remote worker that participated in the Montserrat Remote Work Stamp uh, program. David, the floor is yours. Thank you. All right, so thank you for the uh, invitation. I wanna uh, commence my brief comments by thanking the uh, Tourism Bureau for the invitation to say a few words. Um, on behalf of my family, I would like to thank the Bureau for their hospitality that they showed us during our stay. We were in Montserrat for about four months. Um, so, you know, by way of cutting to the chase, I, I want to tell you, give you the punchline before I go through my comments. The main message that I want to convey to the audience is that even though our family had other options that were seemingly more pleasing um, and appealing, we would have, we would choose Montserrat again for, rem for remote work in a heartbeat. Now, to be clear, we did not pick Montserrat in a vacuum. Uh, my wife, Leanne, has lived in Antigua and St. Croix. Um, we're both Guyanese, and I've lived in Dominica, nearby Dominica. So we had, we, we kind of had um, a sense of what we were getting into. Now, that being said, we still had to evaluate our competitors when we thought about remote work. Since we wanted an island that was not very commercial, one that was focused on ecotourism, one that had a stable internet infrastructure for the purposes of work, and, and one that had lots to explore, there were two options with, with regard to remote worker programs, Montserrat and nearby Dominica. In the end, the choice was fairly easy. We chose Montserrat because of the safety, the back in time vibe that the island had, 
and frankly, because we felt that our dollar contribution to the island would go further and would be frankly much more needed. Now, as I've previous, previously stated, in retrospect, we would, have, we would have made this decision again if we had the opportunity to choose. Our time there was so memorable that I even have become a voracious consumer of island history. Now, that's only because I've, I'm a nerd at heart, but, you know, a Montserrat does things to you. Now, I, will be, I would not be honest if I did not say that there were some challenges to living in Montserrat, and I'll name three. First, we had a few blackouts or power cuts. There were two to be exact. The villa that we chose did not have air conditioning and that's probably due to my frugal nature. And then third, the consumer goods that we were used to purchasing in the grocery store in North America were not easy to come by. However, from what I've listed as cons, you can clearly see that these challenges are not insurmountable to say the least. I think that learning to work around these challenges is part of the experience of what living in Montserrat is, is like. It allows us to step back from our consumption activities that tend to uh, overtake our lives if we live in Western economic systems like you're, you're all joining from. So we learn to do without the special kind of yogurt that we're used to. We took a cold shower every now and then and then we learned to be prepared to have candles on hand if there was a power cut, which really just didn't happen very often. It was not the end of the world. And you know, living through these, these experiences certainly did not take away from the job that we were there to do while, perform, while we were on the island. We, we came there to, of course, perform our jobs. In fact, I, I would argue that um, our experience on Montserrat uh, increased the productivity that we had in our jobs. We learned to be much more efficient with the time that we had so that we could take part in much more important things like going to the beach, taking a hike, spending time with family, and driving to the grocery store before it closed. So in summation, let me, let me end by saying um, something very simply. If you're considering remote work um, and the remote worker program for Montserrat, stop considering it and just do it. This advice is coming from someone who had no personal dog in the fight. That is to say, I'm not native Montserratian, as you can probably hear. I was not even born in near, nearby Antigua. However, I am someone who decided to take a leap and invest in an island that simult simultaneously had so much to offer culturally while, uh, while needing our help. We never regretted that decision. We would do it again. And I think that if you take that leap, neither will you. Thank you. Thank you so much, David, for your uh, thoughts and your experiences there in the island. I think that everyone uh, appreciates your honesty on the couple of hardships that I wouldn't call them that way, but it's like, uh, like you said, you need to grow a costume of this way of living. It's like for every peaceful and beautiful scenery that you have over there, those uh, things seem very minor, right? Okay, thank you. Now we will hear from another participant of the remote work STEM, Kathleen Bennett from Code and Theory. Kathleen, the floor is yours, welcome. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I live in Brooklyn, New York, and I have a family. I have two boys and a husband here, and we found ourselves living in a small apartment during a uh, COVID and we were going literally crazy and we thought we need to get out of here. We need to find something uh, fun to do for the entire family. My husband had been to Montserrat before uh, to participate in the uh, um, race there to go up the uh, um, volcano. So we packed our bags and we found ourselves in Antigua in the airport, taking a small plane over to Montserrat for a, a couple of months uh, to live on the island. We got there. Um, Super excited. Obviously, we had to stay for two weeks uh, in quarantine, which was uh, challenging not having been there myself. But I became super, super close friends really quickly with Bhavna of Ram's Grocery. She, her grocery was about 10 minutes away from the house we rented. And uh, I texted daily with her about 
which boat was coming to Ireland this week? Am I going to get yogurt this week? Or if I'm, am I going to get meat this week? And we just uh, formed this super nice friendship. Uh, she taught me about the island's um, culture. She taught me about the um, ways to go about uh, how to grocery shop, how to take in culture. And it was just a very, very fast quarantine to just be instantly connected uh, to the local culture. Once we were out of quarantine, um, having two kids, obviously we wanted to explore. They were excited to see the volcano. They wanted to go to the beach. They wanted to go diving and, and uh, see all the animals on the island. So uh, we uh, got in touch with Scriber, who is actually one of the well-known um, nature um, guides on the island. And we dropped off our two boys, eight and 11, with Scriber. And we said, see you in a couple hours. And they went to go uh, hiking in the woods and they saw chickens laying eggs in the middle of the path. Um, they saw amazing lizards. They got to see the uh, national bird of Montserrat and they just had the time of their lives. So finding something to do for your children in Montserrat is super easy. You can just stop at any, I don't know, stop on the side of the road and ask, hey, where can we go play? Like, do you have kids? And, you know, somebody is going to come out and start throwing a ball or like um, playing with the boys. Um, my boys also had the opportunity, uh, thanks to the tourism bureau, to visit some of the schools in Montserrat. And it was uh, quite amazing for them to participate in uh, classes there and seeing how school is taught there and also make friendships immediately. As it turned out, one of the boys lived in our neighborhood. The next day, my boys were gone riding bicycles and picking up uh, bananas and mangoes and trees, and I didn't see them for the whole day. So I think for me, it was mission accomplished to give my boys uh, an amazing experience in a, in a, on an island that uh, they would never have had in living in Brooklyn during quarantine. So it's definitely doable and fascinating to go there with their children, uh, with your children, to teach them and to show them what island life is like. We obviously also embraced all the foods uh, and uh, wonderful restaurants on the island. We went on romantic dinners at Watermelon. We frequented Olverston House, the bar and the restaurant, uh, whatever you're, you're, you prefer to do. We uh, fell in love with Rooster's hot sauce. Rooster's was at every table on the island. I made it a quest for myself to get in touch with Rooster. I met him personally. And I managed to uh, get a few bottles before we left back to Brooklyn to take with me. And, you know, once in a while on the weekends, I get my special bottle of roosters out and I kind of relive the memories of um, living in Montserrat and just uh, enjoying the peacefulness and the quiet of being on that island. Um, what else can I talk about? Uh, we uh, went to play soccer at sunset at Lime Kiln Beach and the boys loved it. We stopped every day at John's place, at the people's place. Uh, we mentioned goat water before. It's the best place to get goat water on the island. So there's all these unique experiences. Once you've been there a couple of weeks, you really become part of the Montserrat family. People start saying hi to you. People start inquiring about your children. You know, here and there, somebody gives you an extra piece of candy to take home for your kids. And it's just a wonderful feeling to be so welcomed by an island and to be able to experience living and working from there. We were very, very um, worried about Wi-Fi on the island. Both of my husband and I work in advertising and we could not lose uh, internet. So we actually brought our own Wi-Fi 6 from Brooklyn with us, which um, enabled my children to do remote schooling from there while both of us were on Zoom calls with work. And I think we lost power once and we used that half an hour to run to the grocery shop uh, to get groceries really quick. So it was really no no issue at all um, for us. And, and like I said, if it, if it happened, we took advantage of it and we made it into an adventure. So nothing to worry about at all. There are fantastic surf shops there. There's a group that goes out on Sundays um, that goes diving um, Sunday mornings. There's a, a very livid culture on WhatsApp, a vivid culture on WhatsApp, sorry, um, where you could, uh, order your fresh chicken, where you can find local honey, where you can connect with local hiking groups. So just like ask anybody on the road what they're up to and somebody will include you in their activities and you're instantly part of Montserrat. Um, we had a fantastic time. We still talk about it. My kids dearly miss the pool. They miss the kestrel, kestrel that uh, nested in our balcony and we were able to witness baby kestrels grow up. Um, and they're just like, 
talking about it constantly. And I'm sure we'll find ourselves back in Montserrat uh, in a couple of years to potentially live there again, um, just to experience the peacefulness and the wonderful nature and culture of that island. Thank you so much, Kathleen, for Absolutely. your testimonials. It's uh, amazing to hear that Montserrat is perfect for families that are looking to locate elsewhere and go outside of that as um, busy city life that's so stressful and visit Montserrat with everything is peaceful and the children can play easily. And now uh, with COVID, now that we have had these uh, last few years of the pandemic, basically, in a shutdown of our homes, it's nice to see that Montserrat offers the opportunity to go outside, play, uh, because everything is super safe and there are practically no cases. So it's uh, fantastic to know about that. Thank you, Kathleen. Now we will have the opportunity to hear from a Montserrat national that has experience working locally and remotely. Vida Wade from Fish and Fins, uh, who also has participated in our ambassador program at Island Innovation, connecting islanders from around the globe. So the floor is yours, Vida. Vida, you are muted. Got it, got it. Thanks for that. And greetings, everyone. Greetings from Montserrat. It's my pleasure to be here today to share a little bit of uh, my experience in life um, on Montserrat. And yeah, so where do I start? Um, I am Monstration, and as the um, Director of Tourism mentioned early on in this presentation, in 97, um, we had our volcano become eruptive. And I was one of those individuals that was, um, you know, that was voluntarily evacuated to the UK. So I lived in the UK until 2011 and then returned home to be part of the island's redevelopment. Um, and at that point I was working with the government of Montserrat, et cetera, but I then started to work um, in building my own business here, um, a program called Fish and Fins, where we teach children here to swim, snorkel and get involved with marine science. And um, since 2020 and COVID hit, we've had to work differently. During this time, I have been working predominantly remotely across um, the world, really. I worked um, at the moment in Barbados. Um, I do lectures across the world from Africa, Asia, um, and the US. And um, thankfully, I've never, I've never really had a problem at all with, um, with Wi-Fi service and internet. I have been able to continue my work quite easily. Um, and even sometimes compared to those who are in bigger cities. I have had um, stable internet and though the power does go sometimes, I have been fortunate enough to um, not have to be affected by my work, um, touch wood. But even so, people are very understanding most of the times with regards to our um, current modern day um, you know, such situation relying on, on the internet and, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So I think people tend to be quite reasonable um, when we are all faced with having to work differently and relearning how to, how to work as well. Um, for me, this has been very, um, very, very convenient to be able to live on my home island and um, to be living within three beaches I have a nine-year-old son who at the moment is also working remotely. He's, he does remote school online. And um, the beauty of Montserrat is not only its safety and its closeness to nature, but also I think it's its flexibility. It's just the ability to um, be able to create the life that you want to live. Uh, there's not, it's, it's really a blank canvas. So for my son, Ezra, and his learning, it's very much like, okay, so you, um, he likes to do craft or art. 
And so someone in the community who is an artist or a craft expert can actually, um, you know, do a few sessions with him. So he's learning from experts, cultural um, icons on the islands, people like Scriber, we can call up and say, you know, um, for his birthday, we're going to all go on a hike with the kids, um, or he can maybe even experience activities with local farmers and, and different things that he's interested in. Um, and that also goes to, to, to be the case with, um, you know, other places and spaces. So we have like the Calabash Shanty on Little Bay, which is one of my favorite spaces. Um, and the beauty of Montserrat, it's just, it's just the way the Caribbean used to be. That used to be a tagline we had within tourism and still holds so true in that, um, you know, I, the island is mostly so unspoilt in terms of its nature, but also um, it is, you know, there's no McDonald's, there's no um, KFC and, and things like this. Um, and there's no shopping malls, but things are made with love. But people, things are made with care, and um, and um, where we can reuse items, we reuse items, and they can still be stylish. And uh, a friend of mine, who is um, Justina Frith of the, the Calabash Shanty, which is a really cool little um, um, shop, bar, restaurant, um, and art and craft store at, at the Little Bay area, um, is is one example of, of, of an individual who's just so super creative and also open to the community. So if you need to have something sewn, you can go to Justina. If you need to have something made that's bespoke from natural items, you can book with her. Um, if, you know, and with other artisans and artists on the island as well, you can also um, book time and maybe go and make pottery and, you know, you create your own activities. As we say on the island, you create your own vibe. So you wanna have a picnic in the hills, you wanna have a, a beach, picnic on the beach you can contact you can contact discover um discover um discover picnics and do it that way so um so yeah it's 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 very exciting to be able to live this way and also i think it's so pure um and having lived in a big city coming back to Montserrat it reconnects us to what is really meaningful Well, it looks like there's a slight internet issue. Um, we've lost Vita, so hopefully she'll be back with us shortly. You know what? One of the things that Vita was mentioning is uh, the warmth and the love where people in Montserrat do things. Okay, perhaps we can invite all, all of the. Okay, great. Vita's back. Yeah, sorry about that. My my phone overheated, so um, I'm hoping you're hearing me well enough. Um, but I was just going to wrap up and and say can that. You uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Please go ahead. Yes. Okay, if you can hear me, um, yeah, I was just about to wrap up. My phone overheated, so sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, I was just about to wrap up and say that um, Montserrat is is um, is really a gem. I have lived in big cities um, in London, for example, and across the UK. And returning back home has been such a reconnection to um, some of the things that really matter most. Or um, our time with friends and family to be able to build community, to be able to support a community, um, and to be able to invest in places and people that are really doing incredible work 
um, Mount Stratton itself as a community is um, is really leading in many ways to do with sustainability with our um, pledge to get to 20, 2030 and being um, energy efficient um, with regards to sustainability and our, um, our, our um, relationship with conservation and our oceans. Um, so if you're really into, um, you know, sustainable development, if you're really into looking for ways to give back to a community, then Monstrat is one of those places. And there's my son walking across the room. So, um, yeah, I'm open to questions and um, I would really welcome you to come to a very safe, friendly, um, relaxed Monstrat where people are very real. And I think that's one of the most precious things is that when, when, um, when the people ask how are you they really mean it and when they when um you really want to have uh, as one of the i think it's kathleen mentioned how people were very wel welcoming and you reconnect to the community is because there's a genuineness um and a, a presence of time that people have for you um and in terms of our children i think it's one of these very special precious places in in on earth that you know probably one of the few remaining that um allows us to really allow our children to be children to explore and to um to really in, enjoy the presence of life thank you Bida, for your wonderful experiences it's always great to hear about what's it like living there now, now you're a monster national that knows what's it like to work from there the all of the wonderful things that you mentioned is like you feel the warmth of people in Montserrat. So that's very important. Now, now, I would like to thank you, all of our speakers, for your remarks. We will now move on to the QA section of this virtual event. So, I, um, you are welcome to open all your microphones and cameras to address the questions. And uh, Rosetta and Cherise, please. Uh, I'm going to start uh, checking the questions that we have here on the Q&A box. So anyone that uh, wants to address them is welcome to. Let's see. Um, we have a question from Ives Filbert, uh, Rosetta. How often are the flights between the connecting islands, which means between Antigua and Montserrat? So the flights come like three times per day, morning, mid-morning, and afternoon. Sometimes you have a later flight, um, depending on the time of the year. So you may have up to four flights per day, or even more, um, depending on the time of the year. Perfect. Now, uh, are there any childcare options uh, for children one to five years old? A question from Ioana. Certainly, we do have childcare options, be it um, private, or um, sometimes you can send them to, to nursery as well. So they are definitely childcare options on the island. Thank you. And now another question from Joanna, are there dentistry services on the island and what doctors are, do you have available? What specialties? Yes, we do have um, dentists on the island. Um, and in terms of doctors, we have Different, well, you have persons who do, um, help me, Sherry, if you can remember. Um, well, the main doctors, really, main medical doctors, they, they specialize, and you have specialist doctors as well. Sorry? And then we have surgeons, and we have... And you do have, so, yeah. Pediatricians. Hello? Thank you. Yes, we, we can hear you very well. We have another question from Liz. Uh, is there a ferry service from Antigua to Montserrat? So not at the moment. The ferry service has been discontinued during the height of the um, COVID situation. However, there are plans to have ferry service resume perhaps later this year or sometime, sometime early next year. And the ferry takes just about 90 minutes from Antigua to Montserrat. It's a high-speed ferry. And it's also, the ferry that we had took, um, we had about 270 passengers, I think. It's a 270 passenger ferry that was able to take 
90 minutes from Antigua to Montreal. Also to add Trump. to Rosetta comment about the medical care, um, we do have a Medivac service. So in the event that um, the healthcare on island cannot manage the issue with the patient, we do have a Medivac service that Simon's offers um, over to Antigua or any of the other Caribbean islands. Destination. Oh. And now I, ha I have a couple of questions here that are related to the internet, uh, Rosetta. Uh, would you care to uh, remind people the uh, fiber optic service that's on the island available for high-speed internet? So we have two service providers, um, Digicel and Flow, and both have fiber optic service, so high-speed internet and um, 20 megabits per second generally, and sometimes it goes up, so it's, it's pretty good service for, um, for the island. Wonderful, thank you. We have a question from David Stein. Um, do you have any leeway on how much uh, do a, does a family have to um, spend on rent, uh, utilities, and schooling? And if so, I would add that uh, the program can help you to figure out all of these once you are on the island. Okay, so in terms of rent, that depends on whether you take an apartment or a villa. Apartments are generally um, cheaper. Uh, most of them do not have pools and so on. However, so, so the villas are a little bit more pricey. However, they range, villas range from about, they say 12, 1500 US per month. And that can go up to about $2,500 per month for a villa, three bedroom, two, three bedroom villa. Um, those come with pool and generally they would have include pool cleaning and lawn care services. However, persons are generally required to pay their own um, utilities and utilities range from say electricity, water, maybe say 200 to 250 US per month. Apartments, as I say, would be a little less um, expensive. Thank you. Okay, now we have a question from uh, Ives, uh, which overlaps with another question from Neil about the medical insurance. Can, can a person that is going to Montserrat get the medical insurance from a Montserrat company or does it need to be from abroad? Please. I think that is actually done from abroad. Yeah, you're expected to arrive with your medical insurance. And it should cover COVID-19. Okay, thank you, Sharice. Now we have a question from Ives. What business to business opportunities does the island have in the renewable energy sector? Hmm. So I can't think of anything offhand. Um, so we, we are currently doing solar as well as, um, you know, trying to start with, with our volcano. So we have, um, we've had recently the, what do you call it, Sherry, is that, um, where they were digging for, for that geothermal energy. So that is something that is coming a little later on, but they have already started the process. In terms of actual B2B within that sector, I can't think of anything offhand at the moment. Okay, wonderful. Now we have some questions from uh, social media that are addressed to the speakers. Uh, anyone can take uh, any of these questions. The first one is, uh, what has been your experience like uh, getting to know the locals, making friends in Montserrat while you were staying there? I can take that one. 
I mean, our experience has been super welcoming. We, like I said earlier, I met Daphna through uh, WhatsApp and we became close friends without even knowing each other. And then just going out and talking to people and, you know, talking to uh, the gentleman that that uh, runs Watermelon or even going to Alveston House, you always connect with people right there. And it's super easy to meet people, even going to the soccer field right outside the Alveston House. There is a bunch of... Uh, you know, boys playing, my boys go play and then they have instant friends. So it's very easy to connect with the locals and to interact with them. And it's, there's no barrier at all. It's like super welcoming, like I mentioned earlier. Wonderful. And, and David, uh, your experiences, uh, did, did you visit with your family while, while you were staying in Mosra? Yes, I did. Can you hear me? Yes. So yes, my wife, definitely. my wife was with me. Um, she's an administrator at a university. Um, she required a very stable internet connection because she had meetings every day and never had a problem. Um, and I'm a university professor. I was actually teaching um, two courses while I was there, never had a problem um, with my courses. And then my daughter was doing um, remote school. Um, she was attending school in the US, never had a problem with connectivity. Um, after she, she would uh, go to school, um, we would make sure that we went down the hill, so to speak, to uh, Salem. So she could just hang out with, she had a few friends who, who lived in Salem town. And, you know, we would just take her there and she would hang out. So people were very, very accommodating um, in a way that I don't think um, would happen in, a, in, a, in an island where, um, where, where, um, the economic kind of touch has become much more uh, intertwined in what in everyday life. People kind of like, you know, do their own thing, and uh, it's really slow after work, and and you know, you just have to you go with that vibe, and then you get to know people on a very intimate level. And when when and and just like Veda said, when they say how are you doing, they don't say that and then pass you. They say that and then they want to hear the response. They really care. So that was that it really made it very easy to connect with people. And um, I also we also made friends with Sharice. Sharice invited us over to her house. We still remember that. Thank you, Sharice. <laughs> Fantastic. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, we have a, a couple of other questions. Uh, we have a question from Neil, uh, Rosetta and Sharice. Uh, uh, he's asking if the, the visa for the dependents, when you go as a family, uh, for example, if you go with your wife, can your wife also work uh, during that visa remotely or it, is there like a special permit or something? Yes, both partners can work whilst they're on island. The, the 750 is just the um, application fee, so it doesn't hinder anything anyone from continuing to work whilst they're here. Perfect, thank you. Now we have another question uh, coming from LinkedIn. Francois is asking, uh, do you have uh, the, any other comments about the bandwidth uh, speed uh, on Montserrat? Um. Not at the like moment. For example, the, for, however, persons uh, can bring their own Wi-Fi or internet box mm -hmm. if they wish, and they can be connected to the local service providers, and they pay a monthly fee to to you know to be on that additional or um a Wi-Fi or 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 internet box. Can I jump in here and comment on that? Yes. Um, so just to give you a real life example on the capability of the internet on the island, my wife would be in one room conducting her meetings from the United States. I would be in another room online teaching a class. And then my daughter would be in another room online in her online school simultaneously using the internet infrastructure that was already in place on the island. We didn't bring anything with us. And I wanna stress that word simultaneously. We never had a, we never had a problem. Um, there was never any buffering. Everything went smoothly. Um, that's the level of service with regard to the internet that is available 
on the island. So I just wanted to give a real life example of, of what of what is what is what is able to be done. I can 100% agree to this. We had the two boys mm -hmm. on Zoom calls. We had my husband on Zoom calls, myself on video streaming, and there's no problems. That's the one thing I really, really worried before getting there. And that was the one thing that really did not cause us any problems at all. Additionally, when I'm David was here, we did not have the fiber optics in place in that area. Yeah, so that's now true. we do have fiber optic in place. So the service is even faster than before. Wonderful. Thank you. It's uh, very interesting to hear the experience uh, uh, from people that uh, were there. I, I, so I hope I that. Wanna, yeah. I was going to say, I wanted to add as well that I know people who bought their Wi Fi and internet boxes and just didn't even bother to use them, but they have them anyway, just in case, you know, that they needed to. Fantastic. Now we have a question from Joris. Um, what's the requirement to visit Montserrat, uh, to go there as a tourist? Okay, so depending on where you're coming from, if you need a, if you require a visa, then you, you know, you, as I say, you can go to immigration.ms and determine whether you need one. Um, if not, you just find out about accommodation and flights, et cetera, and, and just come on over and visit. Thank you. Now we have another question from Joao. This is more fiscal than any other. Uh, living there for more than six months would make a uh, monster at my fiscal residence for that year uh, where he comes from. Uh, is there any formal confirmation of that fact that he can send to his uh, native country? Can you repeat that question, please? Yes, so uh, on Joao's country, uh, when you live uh, for more than six months on another country, that country mm -hmm. becomes his fiscal residence for that uh, fiscal year. Uh, so he wants to know if there are any formal documents or confirmation the island can uh, provide him so he can show on his native country. I think, yes, the, the, um, the department um, can, provide, can't remember, can provide documentation. And of course, they do not need to pay any income taxes on this end. So yes, you can, they can provide information and you pay your taxes, et cetera, on your end. You also okay, receive a monthly ID when you mm -hmm. a residence ID card during your stint here as a remote worker. Great to know that. Like, like we have another them. question from Joanna. Are there any veterinarian services on the island? And is it possible to bring a pet uh, while going there to work remotely for a year? Certainly, we do have veterinarian services here on island. However, that pet would have to be in quarantine for a, a, a short while um, when they, and you have to actually apply ahead of coming to Montserrat so that, you know, that they are aware that that pet is going to be brought on the island. But certainly we do have pets on the island. And if you don't want to bring your pet and you do like animals, we have a Montserrat Animals Protection, Protection. Uh, Society, and they do have pets that they loan out to visitors and animal pets. workers, so you can have them during your time here on island. Wonderful. We have a question from Sarah. I already know the answer to this one, but it's always nice to ask. Um, what do you produce over there? What uh, vegetables uh, can you find? What fruits can you find on the island? Well, all sorts, really, um, from mangoes and, yes, lovely mangoes, all sorts, to sugar apples. That's a, 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 a sort of a Caribbean um, fruit. You have sugar apples, you have plums, you have guineps. Guineps is, they are flesh-covered um, seeds, and they're sort of green on the outside, you have guineps. You also have um, guavas, tamarinds. Citrus, Fruit. limes, and you have breadfruit, you have potatoes, you have um, broccoli, 
lettuce, tomatoes, everything, yams, Sava. all of those good stuff. Mm. Because we are a volcanic island, we tend to get rich, we have rich soil, so we do get good ground provisions and fruits as well. We have another question coming from Dr. Glyn Skerritt. Is there an upper age limit for the visa application? Ask that again, please. No. no. Is there an age limit for the visa application? No, there is not no. a limit on the age. As long as you meet the requirements, which is you're earning up to $70,000 a year and you're working for a foreign and business outside of Montserrat, then you can apply. Yeah, doesn't matter. Wonderful. Uh, we have another question from Ives Fieldbert. Are there any easy access facilities for people with disabilities on the island? That's a good question. So, um, yes, um, limited, however. Um, and I would have mentioned that we have recently built a toilet facility that is wheelchair accessible. Um, and other places, they're not necessarily wheelchair accessible, but you do have, they, they are easier, easily accessible. So they're not necessarily wheelchair accessible some places, but not very difficult to get around. Um, so yes, and we're getting there, we're getting more of these accessibilities for, for persons with disabilities. Yeah. Also, I, I wanted to just add in too that there is there are a couple of really brilliant young people here who have like um, small businesses for PA services, and I even use one as well. Time is money, and um, for running errands and um, like doing quick grocery shops, um, you know whatever you need done whoever you need to meet, contact numbers, and really helping to integrate you in the community, I think they would be really brilliant. Um, and it's really also supporting a, a small local business. So, um, so yeah, I think these are some of the additional things that make life um, and integrating in life as a remote worker um, that would be fun and, um, and also very useful and um, efficient ways of, of, um, of really operating here as well. So concierge, thank you. Service. Wonderful. We have uh, more questions coming up. Uh, Joanna is asking if Amazon delivers on the island and also uh, if you have yoga instructors on the island. Yes, Amazon does deliver on the island. So you, you, you definitely purchase your items and send them to, um, you know, wherever in the US or UK or wherever, and they can be shipped two months right? And we do have yoga instructors on the island. We have three yoga instructors. Okay, this question is going to come up with a little bit of controversy. From William Fleeson, who makes the best goat water on the island? <laughs> Difficult to the answer, right? Still out. The jury's still out on that. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we should get somebody from the, you know, who would have been here to answer that one? The people's place does. That's, people's that's place. Our, that was our place. The people's so. place. Yeah, that's what we I would say. Two votes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I agree. Okay, there you go. Okay. <laughs> William is commenting that uh, this uh, question can even bring up a uh, fighting of wards on the island, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for that question, William. It's very nice. Uh, it's like locally, you will always see someone is going to say, this is the best, and you will find another person that said, no, this one exactly. is the best. So it happens it everywhere. It's all down to the person, <laughs> to the individual. Exactly. Well, Meg is asking a question. Um, 
uh, about the 70,000 requirement. That's per family, right? Not per person. Yes, per family. Main applicant, yeah. And, yeah, and we, we're looking to reduce that. It's not yet set, but we will, it, when, once that is done, we will definitely promote, promote it. We have another question from Neil. Um, I read that the temporary driving license will be issued for three months. Is it possible to get a more permanent license when staying for a year? Yes, you can. Um, so yes, that license for three months and it costs um, $50 for that license. 50 EC, which is about 20 US for that license. And that can be traded for a, one that can last longer. However, you'll have to bring with you your valid driver's license in order to, to get that. Another question from William, speaking about food. Uh, what's uh, the food cost on the island? Is it high, low? Uh, are, are you okay to do that in a budget? How does it compare to other Caribbean islands, if you can answer that question? So food cost definitely ranges from, it depends, of course, on what you want. Um, it can be pricey depending on what you're purchasing. Um, so let's say for family budget, I'll say you can get quite a few items on about three, $400 US, um, several bags of, of groceries on three, $400 of, um, yeah. So it depends, as I say, on what you, your taste buds and what you'd like. I'm going to chime in here for a second. If you find your local chicken guy, though, and if you find your local vegetable guy, you can dramatically cut, cut your food costs. Like if you if you just stay local and utilize the local um, people, it, it makes a huge difference. And it's much better food as well. Yeah, can I, can I actually chime in on that? Yeah, um, th that, uh, Kathleen is, is really raising an important point. What we did was we, um, we relied more on the local produce and less on produce that had to be, or I wouldn't say produce, less on things that had to be imported, right? The importation of goods is what raises the price. And you, I, I don't think you'll find any difference on any other Caribbean island. Once something has to be imported, it's gonna cost money, more money than you would find mainland US in Europe, right? So the issue, the, the, the trick is to reduce the consumption of what is imported and increase the consumption of what is locally produced. The local grocers will thank you for that. Yes, and the taste is second to none. <laughs> Completely agree with that. Okay, well, uh, we're running out of time. So uh, Rosetta, would you like to say a few closing words for our audience? Sure, certainly. Um, I would like to thank everyone today for participating in this webinar. And um, we know that you have questions, of course. It's a destination that you know you need to learn more about. And I, I hope that you've learned a lot about the island um, from all of us on the panel today. Thank you so much for your questions. Um, those that we weren't able to answer efficiently, we, were, we are happy to share if you would send us an email we we'll definitely share answers with you. And we definitely look forward to welcome you, welcoming some of you to our destination where you can discover yourself while living and working here on the island of Montserrat. Thank you once again. Thanks again to my co-panelists and Island Promotion. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining and we will be sending you the full recording over email and you, we can stay in touch with uh, the website that I just posted on the chat, MontserratRemoteWorker.com. It's the website for the remote work STEM. And also please follow us on social media. Thank you for attending this presentation. We will see you soon in Montserrat. Bye. Yes, bye-bye.